Guys, today we are going to solder like a pro. Um, I thought I'd do a quick little uh, tutorial on soldering. Um, this kind of applies to any kind of soldering, but we're primarily JST connectors. Uh, this is my um, Neo Illuminate um, kit that I saw for Mazda Miatas. There's some funky rear LED lights. Anyway, it's not what this is about, um, but it uses JST connectors and I, I, um, I solder those myself because I'm not a fan of crimping. Um, so, you know, today we're going to um, learn how to solder these things to make sure you have a good solid connection uh, and you don't have to worry about crimping because that's a pain in the butt. Signals for LED lights, pixel LEDs and stuff like that, you want to have a good solid connection. So I'm going to set that aside and also, of course, I always have to show off my, I can't see this here, but it's my Red Catalyst Sun Fusion, but I also have got a couple of GST connectors in this guy that I soldered as well, so I'm um, going to show that off. So. Diving right in, before we get started, um, just sort of a little prep in terms of, you know, uh, what you need. So I'm using, uh, you can't see it here, but a Heiko 936 soldering iron, temperature set to about 800 Fahrenheit, 790, 800. So pretty high because I'm not using, I don't use, I don't use lead-based solder. So this is, um, I think it's tin and nickel, I forget, I'll double check. I'll post a text in here when I figure it out, but it is basically lead-free, not a fan of that. Uh, I apologize for any kind of background noise, but I'm also using an exhaust system to uh, suck the fumes away. And uh, in terms of, you know, stuff I need to work uh, tools, nice pair of uh, wire cutters that I use, crimps, or a little pair of pliers for crimping, and obviously good quality pair of cutters. I've done some prep work here as well, so what I'm doing is actually I'm creating, I'm going to use this as an example, I'm creating another one of the, the NeoPixel power signal cables for my Neo, Neo Illuminate kit. So I'm going to make another one of those as for this tutorial. I'm using my awesome OmniFixo. I'm not affiliated with these guys, but I can't say enough for these third hand tools. They're amazing at helpers for soldering and whatnot and, and working with my projects. That's my go-to. I use it all the time and I love these things. So they're not, not necessarily cheap, but they are far worth the price if you do any amount of soldering. I highly encourage you to get one again. Uh, they're made by OmniFixo. So hopefully we can see this well enough. So I might bring the camera down to zoom in here a little bit. So I'm gonna take a little breather here. Bear with me while I readjust the camera. So here is the wires. I'm just gonna quickly press forward and do some stripping here. And you want to need to take a tiny little bit off and, and, and you'll see why uh, in a minute when I start to solder and bring things together. So I'm just gonna take a little bit off each and just give them a good twist. All right, next tip, always tin your wires. Nice. Saw sucker closer. Tin. So the next tip is gotta pre-tin the iron. I've actually just run this through. So hang on a second here. Done some cleaning with flux on this, so I gotta get the solder to build back up on it. So let's heat this up a little bit. Come on. So when you're soldering, first tip is you don't. You've got to heat the wire first. So what you do is just sort of I'm dabbing the solder to both the iron and the wire at the same time, and I kind of pull it away very quickly just to enough to get a wick on some solder. It doesn't need to be a blob. You don't want blobs. So there's just enough to cover and, and soak into this, to the actual wire. I also use silicone wire. So they're, I, I, I use silicone for almost all my projects. They're amazing. They also can handle more heat so you don't see the actual sheath start to draw back when you're heating it. So there's a lot of positives to that. Anyway, so pre-tin your wires, set that aside. Now we got these guys here. I've already lost one, wonderful. So the actual connectors, right? So we're gonna pre-tin those as well. And again, this will all make sense in a few minutes. So I'm gonna set these guys up in my third hands and uh, angle counts too. So you want the solder to settle, but you don't want it to flow into the connector area. And what I mean by that is, you know, where the pins are gonna go in on this, where the pins are gonna go in on this, you don't want the solder to flow down. So you kind of angle it in such a way that the solder just settles. Uh, there's a little bit of a blob in the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to preheat the solder. Sorry, get this warmed up, touching the solder bit by bit until it gets hot enough. And then I get a little tiny blob in there. I'm just going to do two for now because I've lost one of the connectors. And then same thing with the other one. So I get enough of a blob in there, right? Now, let's see if I can bring it up close. A little bit of a blob in there. And I pre pre-tend these guys. And now we get a tiny little nub of solder on the soldering iron. I'm going to clean this off again. Make sure your soldering iron is clean as well, by the way. And your tip should be fairly fine point when you're soldering it with you know small gauge wires. I solder most of my work is with 24, 28 gauge wiring mostly, uh, so I use a fairly fine tip. Okay, that tip is good. 
So what I do now is basically, if I can just get this at the right angle, get the soldering iron in there, get the solder to melt. So melt the solder when it's liquid, slide in the wire, leave it there for a few seconds. All right, the wire, obviously when you slide in the wire, make sure it melts the solder on the wire. And then if you can see there, I've got, I'm pulling pretty hard on that. I've got a solid connection. So I don't need to worry about these crimps, right? I'm gonna just do it, but they no longer matter for the connector because it's not the crimps that matter, it's this little tiny catch piece here that catches in the, in the end when you snap it in. But because they're in the way, I'm just going to bend them out of the way. They don't matter again. So that when that's done, I'll just get my little helper here, snap it in, you'll hear it click. Clicks in and Bob's your uncle. Nice solid fitting and it'll last forever. So that is, an easy way to solder these guys. I'll just do the other one here. I got a bit more of a blob on the black one here. Let's just see if we can get that to soak in. Okay, let it sit for a second. Again, so hard. That's a nice solid connection. Bend these guys over. Oh, that's it. JST connectors, 101 soldering tips. So yeah, anyway, I hope that you find that helpful.